Hello everyone, welcome to Current Affairs for Beginners. In this video, we'll be seeing what are all the terms, concepts, any constitutional provisions or schemes, institutions that appeared in 28th December, the Hindu newspaper. But before starting our session, first let us see answers for the questions from our previous video. The first question is, which of the following is or are the critically endangered species in India? And the options are Indian vulture, Ganges shark, peacock, tarantula, gharial, great Indian bustard. The answer here is D. All these five are critically endangered species in India. And the next question is, which of the following countries is or are not the members of South Asian Association for Regional Cooperation, that is SARC. The options are Afghanistan, Australia, China, India and Pakistan. Here the answer is only 1, 4 and 5. So it is A. Because the members of SARC are Afghanistan, Bangladesh, Bhutan, India, Nepal, Maldives and Pakistan. China and Australia were not members of SARC. So the option here is A. Here you can see the three main questions that we have promised that we'll be providing. These questions are from the Hindu paper on 28th December. Dear students, you don't have to worry if these questions were not that clearly visible to you here. You can access these questions in our www civilsprep.com website and you can write your answers even there and we will also provide these questions again in our core notes. Now let's start our session. Our first article is amid protests triple talaq bill has got passed. This article comes under GS paper 1 under the topic of Indian society and the subtopic is women related issues and it also comes under GS paper 2 under the topic of governance, government policies and interventions for the development in various sectors and issues arising out of their design and implementation. That is the subtopic. So from this article, now we are going to see about this concept known as triple talaq and how this article is going to help us for prelims as well as mains. For prelims point of view, we should know what are the key features of the bill. And when it comes to mains, we should know the significance of this bill and what is the need for this law. And the context why we are discussing this is because Lok Sabha has passed the Muslim Women Protection of Rights on Marriage Bill 2018. This bill is also known as Triple Talaq Bill. This bill will make instant triple talaq void and illegal. We'll see what is meant by that instant triple talaq. But before seeing all that, first let us see a brief history of this bill. The case has started in 2016 when Supreme Court has seeked the support from the government that is from the attorney general at that time the attorney general is Mukul Rohatki because there were many public interest litigations that have been filed in the supreme court challenging the constitutional validity of triple talaq as well as polygamy we know what is meant by polygamy polygamy means one man can have more than one wives. This was done that is to check the constitutional validity of triple talaq or polygamy. This was done to assess whether Muslim women were facing any gender discrimination in case of divorce. Because if we see what is this triple talaq means, if a Muslim man, if he says talaq, if he pronounce this word called talaq three times in that particular place, then that is considered as divorce to his wife. 
we said it as instant triple talaq instant triple talaq means it will give divorce then and there and it is irrevocable it cannot be reversed so as it was felt that muslim women were facing gender discrimination in the cases of divorce the supreme court has sought the assistance of the center then the central government has told the supreme court that there is a need to relook at these kind of practices on the grounds of gender equality and secularism followed by this the supreme court has set up a five judge constitutional bench to hear all the petitions that were filed against the practice of triple talaq and polygamy now here arises the issue for muslims there is a law board they had muslim personal law board which is an national wide all india muslim personal law board this board has told the supreme court that the issue of triple talaq falls outside the judiciary's domain it does not come under the judiciary's domain and these issues should not be touched by the court but still supreme court has set aside this practice of triple talaq instant triple talaq saying that this is constitutionally void it is as it is violating article 14 which guarantees right to equality to all the citizens of the country and article 21 which provides right to life as per the indian constitution is women so as supreme court said that it is violating both the articles 14 and 21 the government has proposed this bill known as muslim women protection of rights on marriage bill and they have proposed it in the parliament and they thought of making triple talaq a punishable offense under the law at first the bill was passed in lok sabha but it failed to secure a majority in rajya sabha but now again it has got postponed to winter session of parliament and now it has got passed in the lok sabha now if we see some of the key features of this bill this bill has made that instant talaq including in a written format not only in oral format in a written or electronic format electronic in the sense recently we have heard about an issue saying that there is a muslim man who has been to dubai and from there he has whatsapped his wife pronouncing this talaq thrice saying that he wants to give divorce to her so as per this bill pronunciation of talaq including in the written or electronic format it is considered as void and illegal void in the sense it is not enforceable in law and this bill has clearly defined what is this triple talaq it has defined that talaq as talaq e bidat or any other similar form of talaq that is pronounced by a muslim man which results in instant then and there and irrevocable that means which cannot be reversed divorce this refers to practice under muslim personal laws where the pronouncement of talaq three times in one sitting by a muslim man to his wife results in an instant and irrevocable divorce and according to this bill this kind of practice is considered as a cognizable offense cognizable offense means for an offense to which a police officer can arrest an accused person without giving warrant to that person that is called an cognizable offense so according to this bill this talaq is a cognizable offense which attracts up to 3 years of imprisonment along with fine but when it will be considered as cognizable there are two conditions the complainant 
should be either the married woman on whom this triple talaq was declared or any person that is related to this woman by blood or through marriage blood in the sense her parents or her siblings through marriage in the sense her in-laws or her son daughter some of them should come and complain and this bill has provided that magistrate can grant bail to the accused but he can do so only after hearing the women against whom this talaq has been pronounced and this offense can be compounded by the magistrate based upon the request of the woman compounding means where two sides in case if both men and women they want to settle this dispute without any legal proceedings then the magistrate can allow them to do so that also is based on the request of that woman and one more thing is here allowance the muslim woman against whom this talaq was declared she can seek for subsistence allowance that is maintenance from her husband for herself and also for their children and this amount of elements will be determined by the magistrate not by the women the last one is custody a muslim woman against whom this triple talaq is declared she can seek custody of her minor children she can say that she will take care of her minor children she will not give her them to her husband and this manner of custody also will be determined by the magistrate now if we see what is the significance of this bill means and what is the need of it the time has come to put an end to the suffering of muslim women who have been at the receiving end of this instant talaq for several years and the need in the sense there are more than 20 islamic countries they have already banned this practice of triple talaq the next article is 7 psbs to receive 28615 crore from the center this article comes under gs paper 3 under the topic of economy and the sub topic is banking from this article now we are going to see about a concept known as recapitalization bonds what are these recapitalization bonds these are the bonds that will be issued by the government to recapitalize the public sector banks which were facing financial troubles to put it simply first if we see what is meant by this recapitalization recapitalizing means providing the banks with new capital capital infusion it also can be said in order to improve their balance sheet capital is the money that is invested by the shareholders in the business since government is the biggest shareholder in the public sector banks the responsibility of infusing or investing capital majorly lies with the government so this recapitalization plan will come into action when banks were caught in a situation where their liabilities are higher than their assets we have already seen what is the difference between assets and liabilities assets means something which will give profit on the investment now if bank owns a building that is an asset to the bank because something which is owned by the bank and now if we take loans on the loan which the banks has got in the form of deposit from the customer bank will use the deposit to give loan to another customer from whom the bank will get profit in the form of interest which is an asset to the bank now if we see liabilities liabilities means which banks need to repay or which for which the banks is responsible 
now if we see i have deposited my amount here which bank used to lend to another customer but the bank has to pay interest for my deposit which is the profit for me so the amount my initial capital the amount that i have invested plus which the bank is supposed to give me in the form of interest is considered as liability from bank side if these liabilities are higher comparing to the assets that were owned by the bank then this recapitalization plan will come into action because the bank needs to give back to its customers who have deposited and to run its business it needs funds so being the major stakeholder the government has to infuse capital to run the business in the form of recapitalization and it will be done through these recapitalization bonds by buying the recapitalization bonds government will infuse capital into these public sector banks and the next one is congress pulling farmers says modi though this article is not of much important for our upsc but in this article there is mention of a scheme known as one rank one pension let us see what is this one rank one pension scheme first of all one rank one pension means payment of same pension to the military officers who are of same rank and who have served for same period in the service irrespective of the date of their retirement let us understand this with an example let us say that there is an officer a he has been in the service for 15 years starting from 1980 to 95 and let us consider an officer b this officer has served the office for 15 years that is from 1995 to 2010 according to this one rank one pension concept both the officers because they were having same rank and same length of service they should get same pension even though mr a has got retired before b but they both served for same period of time and they both served in the same rank the next article is center extends deadline to update nrc this article comes under gs paper 1 under the topic of indian society and the subtopic is population and associated issues and the next is it also comes under gs paper 2 under the topic of governance and the subtopic is government policies and interventions for development in various sectors and it also comes under gs paper 3 under the topic of internal security and the subtopic is security challenges and their management in border areas so now here we are going to see about this nrc we have already seen so many times about this nrc but now again we'll see about it in brief so what to study from this from the prelims point of view we should know the particulars the details of this national register of citizens and from the mains point of view how the updation of nrc has resulted into various issues that were associated with ethical concerns so first of all what is meant by this nrc national register of citizens it will have a register of all the citizens that belong to this country that means genuine citizens it will fade out all the illegal migrants who are not having citizenship and this will be based on a particular time limit that has already been specified so if you see why this nrc is being updated in assam officially this national register of of citizens i have said that it is to address the issue of illegal migrants particularly from bangladesh so the nrc that was first 
published in 1951 to record the citizens their houses and households but the thought of updating the 1951s nrc was to root out foreigners that was a demand during the assam agitation that happened from 1979 to 1985 this was the demand from then to update this nrc to root out the foreigners and the cut off date that was fixed is march 24 1971 There were several waves of migration to the Assam from Bangladesh but the biggest wave many people have entered into Assam in March of 1971 when Pakistan army has forced many people to flee to India then an Assam accord of 1985 that ended the 6 year anti foreigners agitation they have decided to set up march 24 1971 as the cut off date people who all have entered india after this date were considered as illegal migrants and they have to be deported back to their country so if we see who is a citizen in assam means as per the citizenship act of 1955 which has got amended after the assam accord for all indian origin people who came from bangladesh before january 1 1966 that person is considered as citizens but those who came between january 1966 and march 25th of 1971 they were eligible for citizenship but they need to get registered and they should live in the state for 10 years but whereas people who enter the state after march 25th of 1971 they should be deported back to their country the next article is river dolphins go missing in sundarbans as water salinity rises this article comes under gs paper 3 under the topic of environment and here the sub topic is conservation of environment from the prelims point of view what we need to study from this article is about we should know about this gangetic river dolphins and its habitat and from the mains point of view we should know about the conservation efforts or conservation of this national aquatic animal from this article now we are going to see about three things one is what is meant by the salinity and we'll see about this gangetic river dolphins first of all what is meant by salinity salinity is the term which is used to define how much amount of salt is dissolved in sea water what is the total amount of salt that has got dissolved in the sea water it is calculated as amount of salt in grams that is dissolved in 1000 grams that is 1 kg of sea water and it is usually expressed as parts per 1000 usually the salinity of ocean water will be around 35 parts per 1000 this implies that the total weight of ocean water in the total weight of ocean water the amount of dissolved salts it amounts to 3.5% now let us see about this gangetic river dolphin this gangetic river dolphin is also known as tiger of ganga because it enjoys the position in ganga which is equivalent to that of tiger in the forest now we see the habitat the place where this gangetic river dolphin lives is being a freshwater dolphin these river dolphins they prefer deep waters that were in and around the confluence of two or more rivers they share their habitat with freshwater turtles crocodiles and wetland birds some of the important characteristic features of this gangetic river dolphin are these dolphins are generally blind they are blind 
and they use ultrasonic sound to catch their food that is their prey they feed on the prey through this ultrasonic sounds and males are smaller comparing to the female river dolphins and as per the IUCN protection status the scandinavian river dolphins are considered as endangered species and they were placed in schedule 1 of our wildlife protection act of 1972 and these river dolphins were facing some threats like and they are getting entangled in the fishing nets and and there were some other threats like they were being hunted for their oil and meat and poisoning of water supply of river from industrial and agricultural chemicals were also some of the threats that were resulting in decline of this population the major threat for these river dolphins were from building of dams along the upper course of their habitable rivers we have already seen the habitat the place where these river dolphins live these are freshwater dolphins so they prefer deep waters that were in and around the confluence of two or more rivers so now these dams that were being built along the upper course of their habitation habitation of these river dolphins were causing a threat to this population because of these dams the population is being segregated and it is narrowing the zine pool in which these dolphins can breed so for this reason the government has come up with a conservation program it has launched ganges river dolphin conservation program in 1997 in order to build a scientific database of their population status and to study the quality of their habitat the place where they live and now from this article we can see there is another threat which is also affecting the population of this ganges river dolphins that is this salinity rise in the salinity in the water system is resulting in the decrease of the population of ganges river dolphin in the region of sundarbans the next article is karmapa kept new delhi in the dark from this article what is important is there is a thing known as tibetan buddhism this comes under gs paper 1 under the topic of ancient history and the subtopic is buddhism now let us see about this tibetan buddhism and what is this karmapa issue tibetan buddhism is a buddhist religious doctrine that is being followed in tibet and other himalayan parts like bhutan nepal india's arunachal pradesh ladakh himachal pradesh and also in sikkim of india tibetan buddhism is the state religion of bhutan and this tibetan buddhism has four schools these are those four schools in these four schools one particular school has got divided into four subsects the head of this first subsect is karmapa so the controversy here in this issue is these two people were fighting for this karmapa statue but this person is not recognized as karmapa in the dharmashalas dear students we have given two questions and these two questions were related to the present current affairs which you can see in the newspaper as well as in the pib the first question is related to a festival and the next question is related to a committee try to answer these questions and we'll discuss in detail the explanation of these questions in our next video and this is our law excellence website where you can access the notes for this video and in our www.civilsprep.com website you can write answers for our mains questions and this is our official telegram channel where you can access the notes for this video along with all the law excellence's material thank you